Hello, today I'm going to take you through a review of just laws of exponents. So let's take a look at a few of these problems here. This is the sheet that I'm going to take you through. That's 1 through 12. And just in case you have a hard time seeing those, I actually wrote these out a little bit larger so we can look at them one at a time here. The first one says, what is x squared times x to the seventh? Now, I'm going to break down, expand this for this first one and kind of come up with our, our rule for it. So if you remember it, you could go ahead and say, hey, I know I'm going to add the 2 and the 7 and I get x to the ninth. But if you don't remember it, here is why we do this. Remember, x squared is the same thing as x times x. And x to the seventh power is the same thing as writing out x seven times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're multiplying in between, in between each one. So this right here is x to the 7th, and this is x squared, and we're multiplying those two things. So really when we do this, we're just counting up how many x's we have here and saying this equals x to the 9th. So in short, when we say when we're multiplying two things, and they are the same base. So it's, this isn't x, time, x squared times y to the seventh, but it's the same base, we call it right here, raised to, you know, it can be the same exponent or different exponents. If we're multiplying the two, we can just add the exponents and say two plus seven is nine. So this is x to the ninth power here. There's our answer. Let's go ahead and apply it to number two. We don't have to draw out all those a's this time. We can say, you know what? I understand the rule. I've got the same base, a, and I'm just going to add those exponents. So I get a to the 12th power. Number three, notice, does not have variables in it. So we could actually say, hey, I know what, I can figure out what three to the fourth is. It's three times three times three times three, right? Which would give me 81. And then you could say, all right, what about 81 times 3 to the 5th? And you could actually calculate it out. But what I'm wanting you to do right now is just write this as the base of 3 raised to an exponent. And just because it's not a variable doesn't mean the rule doesn't apply here. We have the same base. The base is 3 in both cases. And so I can just add the exponents. 4 plus 5 is 9. So whatever all this is, I want to say it's 81 times like 243 or something. Whatever 81 times 243 is, it's the same thing as 3 to the 9th. Here, I'll show you. We could say 3 to the 4th power. Let's see, caret key right here to the 4th power times 3 to the 5th power. That equals 19,683. That is the same thing as saying 3 to the 9th power, 19,683 again. All right. So it does work even though we don't have the same variable or we don't have a variable in there. It's a number instead. Number four here shows e to the x times e to the x. Now, if you haven't seen it, watch the video I posted on e on the number e. It's actually somebody else's video on YouTube. I just thought they did such a great job. Um, I shared that one instead of making one myself. But this number e right here, even though it's irrational, doesn't mean we can't multiply these out. So don't get confused on this. It's the same base here. You could even treat it like it's a variable if you wanted to in this case. And we're saying, okay, it's going to keep its base just like all the others before that we looked at did. And now we're going to say just add the exponents. So we have x plus x, and we know from algebra that x plus x is 2x's. So e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. So that's our first four here that we're going over. Let's look at the next four. So now we're going to talk about writing these out as fractions or dividing them out. So once again, just like a number one on the previous page, I'm going to take you through and expand all of this and see what's going on, not just give you the rule. If you remember the rule from algebra, it's just when you're dividing them, they're the same base, you just subtract them, the opposite of um, multiplying them, right? But I want you to understand why it works the way it does. So x to the fifth is the same thing as x times x times x times x times x, right? You have five x's there. x cubed is the same thing as x times x times x. Three x's there. And if we're looking at this fraction, we can simplify it by saying, well, this x cancels out this one. This one cancels out this one. 
and this one cancels out this one, leaving me with two x's in the numerator, or x squared. Notice that is the same thing as 5 minus 3. So that's what we're doing here. When we have x to the fifth divided by x cubed, it's the same thing as x raised to the power of 5 minus 3, which is x squared. All right. Let's take a look at it with number 6, but you know what? I'm not going to write out x 10 times. That's ridiculous. I'm just going to subtract the exponents here. So this is the same thing as writing out x to the 10th minus 4, or 10 minus 4 there, which is x to the 6th power. It doesn't matter if we call the base x or if we call it a, so long as these are the same bases. They're not different bases. I can say this is the same thing as a to the 3 minus 5, which equals a to the negative 2. Now, let's write this as a fraction. Right now, it's a to the negative 2 over 1. Remember, that is the same thing. When we have a negative exponent in the numerator, we can take that negative exponent and make it positive and bring that base down to the denominator like this. So that's the same thing as 1 over a squared. You could also, if it helps you, I mean, this isn't the answer, but if you're like, why does that work the way it does, imagine this being a to the 0 up top, which is 1. If you subtracted these two, 0 minus 2, you get negative 2 like that. But that's not how I want you to write your answer. I want you to write it as 1 over a squared. Next, we've got that friendly e again. I want you to get familiar with seeing e in problems because when you get to calculus, you're going to see e quite a bit. So for this one, we got um, e to the 4x divided by e to the x. Don't get scared because we write the letter e there. There's still, for the numerator, we got a base of e. For the denominator, we have a base of e as well. So we can rewrite this division problem as e raised to the power of 4x, what's on top goes first, minus x right here, which is e to the 3x. 4x minus x is 3x's, right? And so those are our next four problems there dealing with division. Let's look at our last four. So our last four here deal with raising a power to a power. And so it's an exponent raised to an exponent. So once again, let's expand this and see what's going on. x cubed to the fourth means this. It means x cubed written out four times. and we are multiplying in between each one. So just like if I had something like five to the fourth, that equals five written four times and being multiplied. Here I have x cubed to the fourth, so I write out x cubed four times and multiply. Now, how many x's do I have here? Well, it's all being multiplied and I've got a total of, what, four groups of three, so I have 12 of them. So this is x to the 12th power. So our shortcut when we have a power raised to a power is to multiply those two because 3 times 4 is 12. Now let's apply that to number 10. I've got a power raised to a power, so I'm just going to multiply those two. That is x to the 2 times 7, which equals x to the 14th power. Number 11, I've got a squared to the third power. That's the same thing as a to the 2 times 3, which is 6. Number 12, I've got e to the 3x raised to the x. That is the same thing as e to the 3x times x, which equals e 3x squared, because x times x is x squared. So I went through that pretty quickly because this is just a review on exponents, laws of exponents. You should have seen it in algebra, in algebra 2, but I know we forget things as summer breaks happen or, you know, you get crammed down with so much other schoolwork. So that's your review on laws of exponents. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you're having a great day.